Hey everybody, it's Lisa from Lisa's Paper Passion, another project share. Hope you already watched the giveaway video. I'll link to it below just in case you haven't seen it. Um, but I've been working on these two beauties for on and off for about a week after work every day. And I wanted to share it with you because I've already made two. And I'm in the process of making more because I bought some more hoops. Warning, these are very addicting once you start making them. And they're not difficult at all. Um, I'm giving my hand a try on this smaller one. And um, I haven't finished it yet. This is kind of how it looks after the first two steps, which I'll explain right now. You can see kind of the glue in the back. But I'll also link a tutorial to the one that I watched that showed me how to make it. Because sharing is caring. Um, I always like to make things that are unique and different. And even when I watch a tutorial, I kind of... Kind of try to make it my own because that's what creating for me is about. I don't want to duplicate cookie cutter what everyone else is making, what's the fashion at the time. Um, and then, you know, everybody's like competing with each other who can get the best supplies and stuff. So I'm not into that at all. And if you're the same, welcome back to my channel. Um, so anyway, with that said, um, these are altered hoops. And I fell in love with it when the lady was doing the tutorial. And I'll focus on the other one as well, because the other one's just as beautiful. Um, and it is in Spanish, but you kind of get the idea of what she's doing. Um, I, I think it's in Spanish. I've watched some a bunch of tutorials lately. But, um, but anyway, you kind of get an idea of what she's doing. Sometimes, um, you know, a picture is a thousand words. So you'll kind of get the idea. But I'll, I'll verbalize it to you right now. So, um, so basically, when you buy the hoops... From wherever you buy them. This is a medium one that I bought yesterday. So this is the small. This is the 10 inch. Oh, wait a minute. Let me make sure. Sorry. This is. Yeah, this one is the 10 inch. Um, and again, that's a work in process. This is the 12 inch. And as you can tell. <clears throat> excuse me. The tell. The one I have here is larger than that. And let me grab a ruler, sorry. Uh, this looks like it's the seven inch. So this is the seven inch one, this bigger one. So that's the one I started with and then you can kind of play around um, and see which one you like. So let me just give you like a quick little show of what I did. Let's see, um, let me take this one off. So you basically, one side is tool, the other side is going to be acetate. And that's what holds the shaker element together. Um, so the, the tool is the first side that you do. I'm trying to unscrew this as I talk. The tool is what goes on here. So let's pretend this is the tool. I know it's not, but let's pretend it is. The tool goes on here. And it goes overboard, over the borders. And then you put this on top and you press it down. Um, hopefully that makes sense. So once you do that, then you pull. Let me put this back in here. Okay, pretend that was back in there. So now you have two. And then on the other side, you have the tool sticking out, the extra, the extra tool. So gently pull on it after you make this... Um, if you've embroidered before, you know what I'm talking about. You tighten it after you put the pool, uh, the tool, <laughs> the pool, and then you start pulling it from all sides. That way it becomes taut. And that's this part right here. So if you can kind of see it from the side, that's the tool right there. And it becomes taut and firm. That way it's not wobbly. And then after that, you turn it upside down. And then you fill it up with shaker stuff, sequins, word beads, bows, whatever you want to put in there, whatever your heart desires. There's no rules. Um, I just put what I had and I had fun with it. I like the word bead effect because it's just fun. So anyway, sequins and um, don't put glitter, anything fine, because since this is, see it's coming, some of it is coming out right there. If you put something that's too fine, it will act like a sieve and it will come out because it is tool 
and um, it's not built for you know glitter and stuff and it will come out so don't put anything fine and if you do if you have one of those mixes like I did where some of it comes out you know as you shake it and move it around it's gonna come out and um, there's still like residual like pieces coming out I'm trying to find it with my camera and that's okay it, you know as long as like not all of it comes out so once you turn it upside down then you find a piece of acetate I buy mine from Amazon and I um, cut it initially it helps to cut kind of the size that you have and the way you do that is you just basically put the hoop the outer part of the hoop not the inner part because now you're you know it's all together you put it on top of the acetate and then you cut around it not too short you know it's always to go a little bit bigger because you can always trim it if you go shorter or smaller than the hoop then it's really not going to do its job so as you could tell right here this is glued down and use a glue don't use um do not use a glue gun because it'll melt through the acetate and it's not gonna it's gonna like be a hot mess so don't do that um just use a a glitter let's see what do, what do i call it uh some a glue that dries clear a wet glue that dries clear um so that helps and then what other tips do i have um, I think that's all the tips that I had. So, oh, so then after you put the glue, then usually, you know, you can't rush this because if you rush it, you're going to, you know, make it like kind of messy and stuff. So usually after I put the glue, I just set it aside and I work on something else. I come back the next day or hours later. I usually do the next day. It's up to you. You want to come back and check to make sure this is dry and then you can flip it over and then the fun part begins of decorating it, which is my favorite part. Um, so like in this case, this was my first one and I loved it. Um, I used the Prima. Um, I forgot what collection I used on this one, uh, but it's the it's Prima paper. This one is a Minte paper, one of my new favorite papers. Prima and Minte are kind of like head to head in my, my heart and mind right now. Um, so then I just kind of decorate it with whatever I had, put like enamel, enamel dots, which is what she did. Um, and then in the second one, I didn't do that. I just wanted to keep a plain. And then, um, after you do whatever you want to do to this part, keep in mind, there's nothing backing this up and then don't make it look like, you know, a hot mess on the back. I know I'm using that word a lot today. I don't know why it must be the word of the day because you can, people can see the back of it. So um, I just used paper to layer and then I fussy cut it all these the horse and all this stuff from the paper everything was the, from the paper line and then I just added like a little bouquet uh, a heart and some paper flowers from Hobby Lobby and just had fun with it and on the top I just got these from Michaels I love them they're like these iridescent they come in different colors and I just put a tassel again like the first one I kind of did like what she did with whatever I had um, and then I just kind of made it my own and we have eyelash trim and my new fuzzy sparkle trim and then some gold just to kind of bring it all together because this had gold in it and then on the minte one um, I kind of went rogue <laughs> um, I layered it with two layers this bottom is an edge layer die that I have. So I kind of carried that across. I wanted to kind of uh, create the layer look on this one. It was my first time doing that with, with the hoop. So I had a lot of fun with it. Um, if you like minte paper, like Prima, you have to do a lot of fussy cutting, which I'm not really good at and I'm not patient. So sometimes what I do is I just fussy cut certain parts of it and then kind of blend it together. Like this really doesn't belong with this, but you, you know, nobody can tell. And then this says best day ever, count the happies, just, just uh, from another sentiment line. And then I added the heart and it just came out really pretty in the sequence. You kind of have to know what paper you're going to use. Um, generally, if unless you create like the same style every time, because like this one, I wanted more purples and pinks to match this paper. And then this one, I know that the paper I was going to use, the Minte paper, was more bluish. So I did add a lot of blue sequins to it. And that's from Dollar Tree. This one has pom-poms. I really had fun with this one because I kind of let go. 
pom-pom uh, sequins, these little hearts. Yeah, you, you can still touch it because it's tulle. And then butterflies from the paper collection. And on top, I put these little danglies. This is from Joann's. This is a tassel that I made, homemade, homemade tassel. And then, again, some trim on the top. Um, now, I'm going to be giving them as gifts. I'm not sure how these, you know, my friends are going to display this, but um, that's my intention. And I love having a giant shaker. I don't know. It's just therapeutic. What do you guys think? And then this is the back of it. And then my next projects are going to be working on this one. This one I did a double tool. I don't know. The jury's kind of out on this one because I, I don't see the stuff through as well. See, this is what it really looks like. This is the acetate side. I did this one last night. So I don't know. I'm going to keep it because, of course, I made it. But I don't think I'm going to double the tool next time. I thought doubling the tool will make it more sturdy. So let me know what you guys think. It was a like a mint color tool, which I don't know if you can tell from this from the paper. But I did go to Joann's and pick up some, some tool as I was running out. So, so yeah, so more on its way. I hope you liked my share. Go and try and make something yourself. Uh, make it your own. Have fun. Enjoy what you're creating. And let me know if you have any questions. I look forward to all your feedback. And don't forget, enter the giveaway. There's nothing required of you um, as far as mailing something in. Thank you for your support. God bless. Bye.